The tragedy is that we haven't done engineering to a great extent in engineering education. There hasn't been this commitment to advancing the state of the art. Would a process like this, the small startup, the startup idea of establishing teams, help with that if we'd known about that back in the, in the 90s? Probably. A lot of the practices are still siloed, either within, even within individual departments within a larger university. Some of it is built into the incentives that faculty have to think in terms of the funding cycle, rather than in terms of taking something to scale it outside of the research um, uh, funding process. What we really want is to be able to get the real effective practices or those that are promise, most promising out there where others can use them and be able to influence um, large groups of students rather than just that one classroom. want something to achieve sustainable scale after the grant cycle runs out, uh, you have to think through who your customer is. I come up with some sort of evidence that there's going to be 10 customers in year two. I mean, I identify them. I get their names and I get their contact information. I do it within six weeks. And, and then year three, I find out. I find from them or I find where the next hundred are going to come from. And if I can't find them, I say, let's not do this, let's find something that we can do. It turns out the answers we were getting were pretty lukewarm and there wasn't a huge need for something like that. So then we really went back to the interviews and we were like, well, what are they actually telling us? And so from that, then we could go out and our customer segment changed. the gap between the type of thinking that you bring to a project in order to commercialize it that you don't bring to it if you're a researcher. Um, so i l has really helped break the frame, break those two separate frames. They've acquired a new language, if you will, in terms of uh, the business model canvas and that they now talk about things like value proposition and how there's a product market fit and that there's an alignment of all of the pieces that enable one to be successful, including what your revenue streams are, who your partners might be. Having this framework to be able to evaluate a project or a business concept is incredibly valuable. The business model canvas sort of speaks to the way we think and the way we communicate ideas in a very simple way. You know, we had nine teams and it's now towards the end, the Lessons Learned Workshop, we have nine teams. The fact that they've chosen to stick with it throughout the entire process is an indicative metric to me. That's, that's, that's something that's significant. If we can actually find paths to sustain what appears to be a promising practice and then scale it at the same time, where we really don't do that, readily today across all institutions that teach engineering, for example, then we've really moved the needle in a significant, in a significant direction. Educators are uniquely positioned to change the status quo, and I-Corps-L can make that happen.